Hello everyone, Yoro here, and today I'm bringing you the second part of my chroma tutorial. Here I'm explicitly gonna show you how you can recolor particles in complete. Basically, I'm gonna go through the textures and the bin files. So first of all, you want to use Obsidian to actually extract all your particle files. Mine, yeah, there we go. And I'm also gonna just look again which skin I'm editing. Because I'm still editing my Diana skin, like in the part 1 of this video, which is skin 26. So first in data, you want to check here in the loose files if your skin number ap appears anywhere in here. So I'm looking for 26. Usually the newer skins have a separate area on their own, meanwhile the older skins are pasted and like combined with other skins. So maybe there's something in there I'd say, because it is skin 26. But it seems to be the only one in here which even hasn't mentioned. And then secondly you want to go in the characters folder in data and go for the skin bin. Which is skin 26 in my case. And as the next step you want to get all the particles, all the particle textures. So you want to go to assets, characters, go to the skin folder which is again 26 and then just export the whole particles folder. It should be most of the stuff you need. Sometimes it can use shared particles, for example, it might use something from the base Diana skin. But this will only be really important if you have some missing like textures which still look like the old one. For example, if there's a very star color dis discrepancy. If you will recolor something to red and it's originally green and you see some red left over, you would look into shared particles. Then just extract it. So first I'm gonna go over the textures. Now as you can see here, first of all we also have some model files, which you will not need. SCV and SCO. Sometimes you also have SKN and SKL, same as in models. So now as you can see, there's a clear difference. There are some files which are just black and white and some files which are colored. So the black and white files only get their color from bins. So you don't actually have to recolor them. It won't do anything because it just has a color from bins. Then there are the colored ones which get their color from there obviously. There are a bunch of different ones. If there's a black background, I would advise to keep, try and keep that black. Same goes for white. If you have something like a ground decal, like here, I would also keep that the same. Now, how you can actually edit those is by alpha editing. I personally prefer to do that in GIMP because it's a bit easier with alpha. But I'm gonna just open that one up. Just to show you a bit what you can do. Because the way my GIMP loads it is that actual transparent areas are fully transparent in GIMP. So as you can see here, in Photoshop it would look quite a bit different. I'm actually going to open it up at the same time so we can compare. Now what for example you could do here, let's say you don't like the eyes or the owl I guess. Then if you want to erase that, just take erase the tool and erase that and then it will be fully like you see it now in game just without that that's all you have to do and what is really important if you use GIMP you need to the proper export settings or no if you uh, export particles because they always need transparency now what you need to be careful about is that compression is always set to BC3, which is also written as DXT5 sometimes. It 
varies, but usually PC3 is always written down. Now, mid maps, I don't know if it's actually used anymore, but it, let's say it doesn't hurt if you have it. They're basically downscaled versions of the texture. So just generate mid maps, whatever. The rest I usually don't change when I edit anything in game. Well, let's hope it doesn't actually overwrite it. No, it doesn't. So now let's open this in Photoshop. As you can see, you see nothing. First, you want to go under channels then and check the alpha channel. Now you can see that there's something there. If you want to visualize it, press control on, on the alpha. And then just... Just unlock the background layer and make a mask and then you also have the sigil there. So in here, if you want to do something, you... In theory, for example, if I want to do the same thing here, I would need to go with on the alpha layer with a black paintbrush and paint the areas that I don't want black. So if you f fully paint a custom new decal, for example, you would just delete the alpha mask and make a completely new one. Which you... Which I won't do now because, I, as I said, I don't really like doing that. I prefer using GIMP for that because there's really no downside to it in this case, even though I am an avid Photoshop user nowadays. Now let's actually work on some colored files. So I'm gonna use this gradient as first because it's rather simple, I guess. Now you have multiple ways to edit this. I'm gonna recommend you a hue saturation layer. First, if you just want to shift and see if you can achieve something nice, is you can just yeah literally move it around. I think this actually works quite nicely. Now, don't play with the lightness or more like make it dark or light because this can mess with the black edges in this case. If you make it too light, it's going to be bugged, possibly. So just try and keep the black actually fully black. For example, no. There's actually none here, but imagine if this was colored. For example, in this you could mess with the with the file as much as you want. For example, I'm just gonna make it dark red because this thing still is unchanged, so it actually registers the black or like the background, like probably registers still the alpha. Which it does not for the black backgrounded ones because those kind of like the black is treated as the alpha. So I'm gonna just quickly check if the color change actually looks nice on the other ones too. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and recolor it, like, just click on colorize, then make it a nice, vibrant, but also kind of dark purple, and like, you can mostly make it darker, but, yeah, because, just not the black, mustn't get lighter, kinda. So now I have a color I like. What you what I'm gonna do now is make an action for it because if you have multiple particle files, it's best if you have actions so you don't have to redo the same step on all of every single particle. So I'm just gonna start off with making a new action, just calling it dark purple, and stop recording for a second and select the background layer. Then I'm gonna record again. Make a hue saturation layer and then something like that, I guess. And then stop for a second to see if it looks fine. Yeah, maybe a bit more dark. So record again, make it darker, stop again. Then I'm going to delete this layer. Then I'm going to record again and then go to save as. So it records the saving action. Of course, again, DDS. Replace my file I already had, and then again, 
Here you can see Photoshop NVIDIA tools only has BC BC3 listed. But in the description, if you hover over it, it also says AKA DXT5. And then again, here I want to check the compression quality to highest because it's simply the best. As you can see, this maybe you can see it, I don't know, but this one is more pixelated than this one. So I'll just say that. And then just stop recording and close that file. Now you want to open all the texture files with colors you want to replace or recolor. Not sure what that does, but I'm just gonna recolor too. And I'm gonna skip this one because this one needs a bit of hand editing because it's more like an actual model. I guess it's like those floaty bits around Diana when she W's on the Prestige Battle Queen skin. So yeah, just drag and drop all the files in. Now you want to go to File, Automate Batch, then select your action under here, Source is Open Files. You could also do it with a folder if you want, but that's eh, a bit more work because you actually have to separate the particles into like color and not colored and everything. And then Destination Save and Close, and then Override Action Save as Commands, and then just press OK. Now it will go through all the files, it might take a while, depends on how many files you have, I don't have too many so it doesn't take too long. But as you can see now all the files are recolored. Except of course the ground one because I do not want to change that because it will look weird otherwise. And I'm gonna quickly just edit this one and then I'll be right back. Okay I'm back, so now what we want to do is recall the bins. So for that, prog uh, for that process I will be using the program called Hexa by Martius or Martin, however you want to call him. Which is an amazing program and I love that he actually did it because it was originally a request for me because it's really really tedious to recall up bins by hand. Because you have to replace a thousands and thousands of coding. Now, if you get Hexa, it should look like something like this. There might be some more updates or not, but it always looks really similar. And you're actually immediately in bin splash, which is the part that recolors. Now, first here you can see is the color, like gradient and fields, I guess. You can increase, you can do very, very many colors, how many, however many you want. And to set a color, you just want to click on it, and then here you can use an eyedropper. Which is quite insane in my opinion. You could also just paste in some color codes here, for example, if I just take this color code and paste it here, then you have it. And the alpha is, has to do with tra transparency. I wouldn't, I never messed with it, so I wouldn't do that either, maybe. And I'm just actually gonna go ahead and eye drop some colors so it matches the recolor I just did. I kind of think you need a bit of variety for it to look good in the end. Because otherwise your particles will look really bland, so you want to have some light tones, some dark tones, maybe some desaturated tones or something like that. Now if you want, you can save the color sample, I'm just going to color it purple. And as you can see, there are already a bunch of colors in there, which you can just then sample and reload it in here. So now, select your files. First of all, I'm going to start with the, like the ones outside of data, or the one inside data, which gets put outside of data by Obsidian. Which is fine, like that's not an issue, it can just reload, or uh, can load it normally like that. 
And now I actually got the pop-up that there are no color values in this bin. So this bin is useless for me. I can delete that. But I think I deleted it too early, so Hexhouse is going to complain in a second, probably. So now you want to open your skin bin. Which should have a bunch of colors, as you can see now. Now, Prestige Diana has like... Pur uh, purple, like gold, red, pink color scheme, kind of. Which you can see, it it's not just plain gold or anything, it has a nice color range, which you could play around. Now I want to get into what those mean, all of those short things that sometimes have color, sometimes have, don't have any color. So in order to figure that out, you click on the question mark. So OC means outline, fresh and color, which is like kind of an edge glow, I'd say. Then RC is reflection, fresh and color. I, I can't. I guess it's just a reflection, kind of like some light shining, maybe. Linger color is when something fades in or fades away, like some mist or something, or uh, when it's dying, says it here. Burst color is. Uh, how it starts the the particle, like what color, and color is just the main particle color. Now BM stands for blend mode. This is kind of like all of the different layer styles you have in Photoshop, for example. So you can play around with that, but it might be a bit hard. And I just realized I kind of forgot something in the settings. I would um, recommend to ignore black and white values because again that can mess with transparency like that doesn't mean you can't recall anything in black and white colors only if you want to do that that just means it ignores black and white colors which are originally there because black again is completely transparent white again is completely like bare non-transparent and then remember recolor targets that's what i just explained to you those things you checked will get remembered when you restart it so now the thing is when you switch back it will close your bin, so just open that up again and sample. Now a simple way to recolor everything is just go here and then you have everything selected. Which I tend to do unless you actually want some specific things. For example you can see all the container names here. Like this thing here, is th those are the colors when Diana's passive hits someone. So if you want to recolor something specific, you can also just select a single container or a single emitter even. If like one thing doesn't look correctly and you found which one it is. But I'm just gonna go ahead and select everything and press recolor selected. Now as you can see everything is nice and purple. Then I'm gonna press save bin. File save successfully. Don't forget to delete the JSON files. So this is something that Hexo needs to work properly, so it converts bins to JSON just for working with it, and you can simply delete that after you've finished. So yeah, now I'm gonna go ahead and load the mod in-game and show you how it looks. Now, as you can see, here's Diana, she still has a bit of a gold glow for her prestige skin, but her particles look purple, like pretty nice, they're kind of dark. Like kind of didn't get the color correctly so I need to edit that and there you saw the little crown on the W as well but everything's recolored now everything looks mostly fine so yeah that's how you recolor bins with hexa and finish your chroma so yeah I hope this tutorial helped you that you got to finish your chroma fully and if you have any questions, leave them in the description as per usual, or also on the Killer Skins post. You can also ask me on my Discord, or on the Killer Skins Discord, if you have any questions. And yeah, I hope this tutorial helped you, and I hope to see your skin on Killer Skins soon. See ya!